Hello and welcome to the final episode of A Splash of Paint brought to you in association with the SAA, Society for All Artists. So without further delay, let's take a closer look at what's coming up on today's colourful palette of inspiration. Popular artist Marilyn Ellis reveals a simple technique for tidying up your finished works of art. Experimental artist Alison Board demonstrates how mixed media can add some colourful character to a nosy cow in today's Try Your Hand Out project. Watercolour wonder Jeff Kersey shows how to paint light over dark using colour and tone. Versatile artist Pip McGarry goes wild with oils to wash, brush and comb some tiger's fur. And finally we go back to where it all started and let Vic Bearcroft have the last word on pastels. So let's kick things off and welcome popular artist Marilyn Alice as she reveals her favourite tool for tidying up your finished works of art. Hi, today I'm going to show you what you shouldn't be without. A putty eraser. I think you could all agree with me, it's something that we really need to use. It's great when you're drawing to be able to rub out lines so that you can paint very, very quickly in the right places with watercolour. But also when you've finished your painting, I like to take out all the pencil marks. It's just my personal preference, you don't have to, and there's nothing wrong with leaving pencil marks in. I just prefer to take them out. Sometimes when your hand rubs on the paper as you're drawing, you can end up with very dirty looking marks. This is brilliant. A putty eraser is different than the erasers that you might normally see in a stationer's. It's putty and it lifts the um, pencil off of the paper without damaging the paper. And that's the importance of it. Some erasers will actually take off the surface of the paper and damage your painting. You can rub really hard and most of those pencil marks, even though you've painted over them, will come out. You can see I've been quite vicious with this, but it's not damaging the paper at all. If there's any stubborn bits, just keep working into it and eventually those will come out. Now do make sure your painting's absolutely dry before you use this or you might rub some of the paint out. But I think it just adds more sparkle to the finished painting when the white looks sparkling white. A putty rubber is the perfect accessory for any artist. It's powerful enough to remove pencil marks, but gentle enough to prevent you from damaging your surface of your paper or spoiling your finished painting. OK, time for us to join experimental artist Alison Board as she demonstrates how mixed media can add some colourful character to a nosy cow in part one of today's Try Your Hand Out project. Enjoy. Thanks, Matthew. Hello, everyone. Today I'm going to do a portrait of an animal and I've chosen this great photograph of what I call nosy cow. So I've drawn out my cow ready onto Milford watercolour paper. Now Milford watercolour paper is a very special watercolour paper. It's a beautiful surface but it can be quite temperamental. So you do need to be a little bit careful with it when you're scrubbing away at the surface. I have used masking fluid on it but I've used the Schmincke masking fluid because it's a much kinder masking fluid and it's white. So you may not be able to see it, but I can assure you that later on in the painting, you'll be able to see that it's there. So actually today, I'm going to start off with a slightly different technique and I'm going to start off with these Stabilo pens. And I've got two sorts here. I've got a fine liner and I've got a bullet tip and I'm using the colours black, grey and brown. And I'm going to do a little bit of sketching with them first. So I'm going to start off with the grey. And I'm looking at my cow for all the areas where it's got bits of shadow. But I am using a very scribbly method. And you'll see why when I use the spray bottle on it in a minute. So scribbling away with my pen, adding a few little bits and pieces here and there. And I'm adding it where I'd like there to be some interest or some texture or some shadow. So I'm giving it a good old scribble few little bits and pieces in the ears, few little extras around the eyes and then round the nose area. So that's my grey. Now I'm going to go in with this brown, this rather lovely nutty brown colour. Where I'm going to add some little dots and dashes, nothing very structured, what I call the Morse code technique of drawing, dots and dashes. So a few little bits here and there. And this is hopefully where you start to see your drawing come to life a little bit by adding colour back into it. There we go. Now, it doesn't matter if your pen goes over the top of your masking fluid, because when you take the masking fluid off later, it will break the line up, which is a rather nice way of working. Now I'm going in with the black. 
Now, I'm going to be very careful with the black because the black does run an awful lot when you spray it, which I'm going to do in a minute. So I'm just putting a few little hints of black here and there, particularly around the eyes. Got some shadows in here. This deep part of the ears. Nice little bit in the centre of that forehead where that swirl of fur is. And then the majority down here on the nose. This is quite a nice way of getting into mixed media painting because it's not too technical and you don't have to think too hard about it. And a pen is a nice, re really easy way to start accessing your painting. So here we go. There we go, a few bits and pieces. So you can see I've had a nice scribble all over the top of it. Very satisfying way of working too. Now I've got a spray bottle, just an ordinary spray bottle full of ordinary water. People sometimes think that there's some magic ingredient in here, but there really isn't. It's just water. And I'm going to, from a relative distance, spray at that pen. And hopefully you can see straight away that it's starting to run. You want to be quite frugal with it. You don't want to go mad spraying it, otherwise it'll all run and you'll never see it again. But again, if it starts to get a bit out of control, and obviously I'm working on a vertical surface, so it is all starting to go south. You can start mopping it up, but it is a good idea, if you can, to leave it alone. Now, hopefully, you'll be able to see why I chose those particular colours. Because of the way pens are made up, they're made up of component pigments. So colours that are dark, such as brown or black or grey, are made up of other colours. And when you spray them, it activates those other colours and you start to get them split into greens and pinks and turquoises. And this lovely Milford paper actually plays on that and makes more of it so that you get it splitting into colours. I also like the technique because it adds lots of texture to my work. And obviously, with this subject matter, we're after texture and we're after character as well. So I'm going to leave that to dry while I start to think about my background. Now, my background is going to be very simple. It's all about the face of this cow and not about the situation that it's in. So I'm just going to mix up some very simple blues and greens, drop those in behind so that I can concentrate on the main part of the cow later on. So I've got my lovely sable brush here, some nice clean water, and I'm going to pick two colours. So today we're going to go for cerulean. One of my very favourite colours, very useful for all sorts of subject matter. And it's actually going to be a very useful colour later on in the cow when we try and make these greys. And the other colour I'm going to use today is the hooker's green. So a nice naturalistic looking green. And actually what I'm going to do to that, just looking at it on my palette, is add a tiny touch of black. There we go, lovely and rich now. And we're going to work in a vignette style today. And a vignette style means that your painting will have soft edges. So it blends off into nothing. And to be able to achieve that, you need to add some clean water to your paper first, so that when the colour meets that water, it will just diffuse and disperse ever so slightly. And down here, because in composition terms, we're after a diagonal effect. We've got the head in the centre. I'm going to put some blues up here and some greens down in the bottom corner. So putting in my water, again, if you're not happy, use the kitchen roll to mop it up. When you're working on a vertical surface like this, try to just keep an eye on where the water's coming down because you don't want a cow with a blue head. So we just add the blue in here, and then if it starts to run away with me, I can just mop it up. So adding back over the pen. Don't worry about if you cover up your pen. That's part of the fun of painting. Add it all back in. Keep an eye on that. I'm just going to take it up into this corner a little bit so we get that diagonal effect. And carry it on under his ear. You don't want to split him in two. Bring that down. And then I can add my green to it, which will hopefully suggest hedgerow or some sort of situation for him to be in. Now, not sure if that colour is actually going to be dark enough for me now that I see it on the paper, but that's OK. Just do a little bit of mopping up with the tip of my brush first. Using my kitchen roll. So I'm going to strengthen up that blue just simply by adding more colour to it. And as you can see here, I've got a lovely big palette, which is very important when you're painting in this impressionistic style, that you've got plenty of area to mix your colour. There we go, because the paper stays wet for an incredibly long time. This Milford is great for doing wet-into-wet techniques. That's much better, much stronger colour. 
And then I'm going to go straight into the green, be a little bit braver with my black as well, and bring that down here, right by his face, over his whiskers, to suggest some foliage. And down here, I can scrunch up my kitchen roll, and I can roll it back into the surface, which will hopefully suggest foliage. And up here, we could do the same thing, and we could suggest clouds. I'm pretty happy with that. This area looks a little bit blank at the moment, but that's going to be cow, so we'll tackle that bit later. Now I'm going to start mixing up colours ready for when that has dried. So today I'm going to go for this gorgeous brown burnt umber colour. So that's all ready to go. Looking back at my picture, he's very dark around the eyes, so I'm going to need my burnt umber with some black added to it as well. And I've got a whole plethora of greys here. So I'm going to use the cerulean for that. I'm going to use some of the brown for it as well. And then back into that cerulean, I'm going to add a little bit of black. So I've got all my colours ready. And this is a, a really great way of working. If you do all of your preparation, when you come to do the painting, you don't have to worry about what's drying and what's running away with you because it's all there ready to go. What's really terrible is if you put colour on here and then you haven't got enough left and you're desperately trying to mix up colour or all the time this is drying and that's when it feels out of control. So it's a great habit to get into, getting all your colours mixed up on your palette ready so that you can concentrate on your painting. So whilst this background is still wet, I'm going to work back into my cow because hopefully some of the colour will reach the background and it will bleed out into it. So I'm going to start with very pale wash of the brown. Add a little bit of water to that. It's a little bit strong to start with and all I really want to do is block in colour. Just using my brush very lightly, stroking the paper, just deciding where it is I want my colour to go. So my brown is going to come down there back into the colour, adding this bit, coming down here. As you can probably see now, the masking fluid is starting to work for me by creating a barrier. And I'm going to shape his face ever so slightly. Working on this ear. And as you can see, where it's gone over the pen now, that's already created a shadow for me, and I haven't really had to do an awful lot to it. This is where that technique can just cut out some of the hard work. And that's what you want it to be. You want painting to be fun, and you want it to be nice and easy to achieve. So there we go, my colour's in. I'm going to work on his nose, and then I'm going to let all of that dry before we carry on to the next part. So got a little bit of brown in here little bit of brown over the top of his nose, which I'm going to blend out with some water so I don't have such a hard edge. Great. And then just to finish off with, while we're blocking in the colour, I'll give him a body so that he's not a floating head. So some colour along here. Trying not to interfere with that shaping that I've done on his face. Using my brush on its side, using the kitchen roll so that it blends out into nothing. Great, that's working just as I want it to. And then I need to give him some essence of colour so that he's got a chest or legs to stand on. And there we go. Not going to do much more to that for the time being. I'm going to let that all dry thoroughly and then I can start working back into it. And later on in the programme, you'll see me finish him off. Lovely wet into wet techniques. Perfect for impressionistic work. Thanks, Alison. We look forward to seeing part two later on in today's programme. Well, folks, time for a quick break. Join us in part two, though, when I'll be going out and about with my tablet computer and showing you how you can use it as an artistic aid. And watercolour wonder Jeff Kersey will be showing how to paint light over dark using colour and tone. We'll see you soon. <laughs>